Hi, welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. I'm Emily and uh, this is little no name who likes to sit on me for some reason. She's one of our chocolates. And this is our weekly chicken update. So the chicks are now, I guess, four weeks old. And they are, they have the full run of their, their coop and the, the kind of run that's part of their coop that's all vermin proof. And probably next week they're gonna get their, their outdoor run out there. Um, meanwhile, they're making use of this, having dust baths and all kinds of things. And our main adventure for this week was that we bought some hay for their new um, uh, bedding, uh, since we were running out of the wood chips that we used before. And we, uh, before we took it in here, uh, well, Marcus had to build this sort of thing to hold it up here. And before he did that, we left it in the car thinking, great, we'll just quarantine it in there. Well, guess what? When we took it out of the car, the whole car was full of hay mites. So that was interesting. And uh, we've put it in here now. And I actually ended up going to get some diatomaceous earth to, um, to kill the hay mites. So basically, diatomaceous earth is a kind of, uh, it's basically powdered fossilized tiny animals which have silica in their, their diatoms, right? So um, there's silica in those fossils, which kills insects. So you can use diatomaceous earth to kill ants, for example, if you put it with an ant attractant. It comes as a powder, and apparently that's one of the best things you can do for chicken mites because it doesn't harm the birds, but it can cause them uh, silicosis, just like miners get. And uh, so you need to make sure that you get the food grade type and to be, you know, careful with how you apply it and where you put it. So I put some in their bathing dust and I put it all into this hay here, hoping to at least manage the population of mites because now they're everywhere and I don't want mites everywhere. So, um, however, once I put this little girl down, I thought it might be fun to look at some mites under the microscope. So, will you get down? I'm going to try and fill a petri dish with the, the droppings from under here. If you go like this, it kind of falls out and presumably there are mites in there, but they're too tiny to see. I mean, honestly, I saw them in the car, but only on the black parts of the car. They're so tiny, you just see, it, it looks like pollen. If you've ever had pollen on your car, just a bunch of them, except some of them are moving. And you know, that was creepy. So uh, let's see if we can see some in the microscope. And you have to get down. Are you ready? Down you go. So I am just gonna stick this little tray under the microscope and see what I can discover. Well, the grass is pretty interesting and there are, the mites are so tiny and this is so zoomed in, it's actually hard to find them. Oh, there's one. I have found uh, a couple of different ones so, I mean, I think they're the same type, but maybe different life stages or something. Some seem to have a whole lot of little hairy things on them, and some don't. Some have a red kind of thorax or head or something, and uh, a couple of front legs are also orangey red. And, yeah, I don't know. I also find it fascinating to see that the bits of grass in this hay have barbs on them. No wonder grass gets stuck in things. You'd never know that just holding it. Actually, and not all of them do. I guess there are different types of grass in here. But oh, they're pretty fast. Some of them just disappear. And uh, yeah, this is super interesting. They're so tiny, actually, that I tried to put a pin in here to move, like with the tip of the pin, to move a piece of grass away so I could see one. And the tip of the pin, like the pointy part, was much bigger than the mite. So no wonder they only look like the tiniest little white specks. Come on everybody, they're getting quite heavy. Oh, 
Oh yeah, you like that beetle. Oh, excitement. What were you going to nestle in? All right. Well, stay with me for a minute. So, uh, out here in, in their adventure yard, um, this is my little friend who usually likes to have a snuggle. She comes and sits at my feet usually. Oops, bye-bye. And uh, until I pick her up, I think she'll just sometimes roost on my hand. Um, yeah, so as you can see, they're all getting quite big now. I don't know if they're three or four times the size they were when we got them. It's hard to know when part of them is legs and it sticks out so much. But um, some of them have like feathers everywhere and some of them like this funny one walking up to me right here still have their, their partial feathers. And uh, you were getting to know their personalities a little. So uh, one thing, the, the nail polish adventure from last week totally failed. It took about one day for all that nail polish to scrape off as expected because of course they're scratching all the time. So our three um, Australorps are still unmarked and we can still kind of tell who they are but it's getting more and more difficult so I'm not sure what we're going to do in the end. Um, it might just be that in the end we forget who was an Australorp and who was a Jersey Giant but for now that's the way they are. This little one here, no not you, this white one over here is an Americana. Hello! Hello! And actually, she or he likes to run at me and attack me, which is quite interesting because I still have a scar on my face from um, the Aracana that I had when I was a kid who attacked me because I fell in front of him. We had a, an Aracana rooster and they do seem to do that. Um, apparently, the daughter of one of the people we got these chicks from also has been attacked by an Aracana rooster. So interesting. We will see how that one develops. That's Fluffy Face, by the way, from the earlier videos. It was the little tiny yellow chick that looked like a cartoon chick. Yeah, she's becoming the aggressive white chicken rooster. I don't know what she is, but anyway, we'll just let them have their little little visit here while Marcus is cleaning out their cage. So it turns out that we who all have serious wheat issues have issues with the food and with the food dust that's everywhere because of course there's wheat in all the chicken food. Um, so my son has been getting nosebleeds from the dust in the air and we're kind of feeling sick after we go in there because of the, the food dust and you know, I guess they're kicking it all into the air. So, um, my dear husband Marcus has volunteered to be the one who cleans the pen and replaces the food, which is, or not replace, refills the food and cleans the food containers, which wasn't really the plan, but that's the way it's going to be. And hopefully, eventually, we will, you know, when they're not chicks anymore, maybe there will be a little less dust around and it will be easier for us. Meanwhile, the rest of us mostly visit them in the yard, not so much in the coop. Hey, big one. This is big one standing on my hand here. The one she or he is an Australorp. Hey. And has always been the biggest one. This is the one who goes around looking after the others, breaking up their fights picking little things off them. She's getting quite the big comb, so she, that makes us think she might be a rooster, but then look at her tail, it's almost non-existent. So who knows? This little man over here is one of our crested leg bars, and uh, you can see he, just like the little hens that we have, has a, uh, a crest on his head of feathers that are starting to pop up and I mean they've been showing for a week or two but now they're getting really obvious. He's the one that we know is a rooster because they're differentiated at birth by their color so or at birth at hatching so he has the bars all over him and uh, we have two leg bar hens also crested they also have their little crest and then eventually the little crest is less obvious because the comb comes up in the middle of it but at the moment they have this cute little tuft on their head. So I just found a bunch of tent caterpillars in this apple tree and uh, handily the chickens are right below. So I'm going to pull their nests off and 
drop them down to the chickens who are going to get their first caterpillar feast. Sorry, apple tree. You have to lose a couple partially eaten leaves here. Here you go, everybody. And now this one. All that silk, all those caterpillars. Oops. So I guess that's it for this week's chicken update. Uh, we'll see you next week and uh, happy exploring.